This video contains material of an adult nature, including some really bad jokes and puns that aren't suitable for any age. If you are 13 or under, please go get a parent and ask them permission to watch this video and if they could watch it with you. No, really. If you're 13 or under, you really need to click stop and leave. Step away from the computer. Go on. Oh, sex is just so embarrassing. Well, for evolution, that is. Evolution has no adequate explanation for the origin of sex. There are millions of species, the vast majority of which have reproductive systems that are incompatible with each other. Yet we're all supposed to have come from a common ancestor. Bacteria, plants, birds, insects, fish, whales, us. Yep. And look at all of the differences between the reproduction systems of those organisms. So how did we evolve from the primitive organisms that reproduce asexually into two incredibly complex genders that need to interact with each other in order to reproduce? And remember, this is the reproductive system. It has to work right the first time, every time, or it's the end of the species. Now, bacteria were supposed to be some of the original, most primitive life, and their asexual reproductive system obviously works really, really well, and they can produce huge populations in hours. There is no reason for natural selection to select a much more complicated, much more vulnerable sexual reproductive system. See Crevo rant number 110 on natural selection. Bacteria can reproduce where they are, as they are. There's none of this messing around trying to find a mate. Now, according to the evolution myth, humans, the elephant, the horse, the dolphin, stegosaurus, penguin, frogs, the eagle, the kangaroo, and yes, even the duck-billed platypus all had a common fish ancestor. Now, even among the fishes, reproduction methods vary. Some give live birth, but the vast majority have the female unloading her eggs with the male spraying sperm on them. The fish that grow are completely on their own to fend for themselves. No babysitters required. The fish were supposed to have evolved into amphibians, which have differing reproductive systems again, and the amphibians were supposed to have given rise to the lizards. Now, lizards also have a whack of different reproductive systems, but most male reptiles have a penis with which to internally fertilize the female. Why? Because unlike fish, the eggs must be fertilized before the eggshell develops. Notice what just happened. We just took a quantum leap in complexity. The female needs to develop a cloaca that is compatible with the male's penis and will allow fertilization of the egg inside the female. She needs to figure out how to develop a shell on her eggs, but only after the eggs are fertilized. There are complex control systems that need to be made and developed along with this new reproductive system, or it won't work. Independently and at exactly the same time and place on planet Earth, a corresponding male needs to develop a penis, needs to know how to use it, and the female needs to know to let the male use it. I need to warn you, the characters in this next scene are completely naked. You wanna do what? Oh, and by the way, the embryo gets its nutrients from the egg itself. Again, remember, according to evolution, this is to happen one small step at a time. Yet if any one part of this incredibly complex system is not there, or even works inadequately, it's the extinction of the species and the extinction of any evolutionary progression. At this time, I need to point out a fatal flaw in the thinking of many an anti-creationist. When discussing evolution with them, they often refer to changes in a population, as if an entire population is all of a sudden going to get the same genetic change. Hello, the change happens first to an individual, which then presumably becomes the dominant population. Now, it always starts with a single individual. Only in this case, the changes need to take place simultaneously with the male and female of the organism. So let's get it up the evolutionary tree a little more to the monotremes. Monotremes, like the duckbill platypus, are almost like a cross between reptiles and mammals. The platypus lays eggs like a reptile, yet produces milk for its young. The babies are completely helpless without the mother's milk production system. 
So now, not only are there radical changes in the reproduction of the platypus, the platypus also had to figure out how to produce milk, had to evolve control systems for the milk production, which is regulated by the reproductive system. The babies have to figure out to drink the milk, etc., etc. Both the male and female have a cloaca, and the male's penis has to come out of the cloaca in order to mate. Again, two incredibly complex systems that must evolve perfect compatibility. Imperfect does not work. Imperfect means the extinction of the species and extinction of evolution. Then we come to the placental mammals. Mammals that developed a placenta which nourishes the baby, yet doesn't allow mixing of the blood between baby and mother. Mammals also have breasts. Where did those come from? It's utterly ridiculous to suggest that perhaps lizards evolved breasts. Only a boob would suggest such a thing. You want me to grow a what? But someone, somewhere in the evolutionary lineup had to evolve the first breast and its complex control systems. Now, I'd really like to stick around and milk this for some more bad puns, but I, I gotta move along. The placenta itself is also insanely complicated and replaces what external eggs normally do, now that the mammals mysteriously lost the hard egg shells. The cloaca has to change into a uterus, which both allows pregnancy and a method of delivery of the offspring. Did an egg get lodged in the cloaca of our ancient ancestor and then take root? How did all of these changes from our ancient ancestor happen one small step at a time? I have a bone to pick with the anti-creationists, and I don't mean the leg bone, though that would be humorous. I'm thinking of a bone that helps one get it up better than the rest, the penis bone. The males of all the great apes and most mammals have a penis bone. The male gets an erection by contracting muscles on this bone, allowing him to penetrate the female. Yet, somehow, somewhere along the way, a single ape ancestor lost its penis bone and developed a hydraulic system, complete with complex control systems for making an erect penis. This is why Viagra was not a successful company until quite recently, only after humans had evolved. Now, if any part of that complex codependent system is missing or fails, it means that the first innovator cannot reproduce, and it means the extinction of the species. And remember, the female system has to be compatible with whatever the male system might be. The penis bone in mammals shows incredible variety and must be compatible with its female counterpart. The two have to evolve independently, yet at exactly the same time and place on planet Earth. You think you have a hard time getting a date? Ha! Imagine if Lucy evolved changes to her reproductive system even 100 years before her male mate did. She'd be awful lonely waiting by that phone. Now, some have tried to argue against Adam and Eve, saying their children would be in incest. Now, while that's true, you'll please notice that the evolutionary timeline involves massive incest multiple times. Every time you made any change to a reproductive system, you have to have a completely new, compatible male and female system. The changes have to happen to individuals first, meaning incest for multiple generations, multiple times throughout the evolutionary history. Within the biblical creation framework, Adam and Eve were created perfect human beings, so marrying direct relatives wasn't a problem until later on down the line when humans had deteriorated somewhat genetically. In fact, if you want to get technical about it, evolution would require bestiality. Because technically, it would be like the first innovator was having sexual relations with a different species. Sexual reproduction cannot and would not evolve one small step at a time. End of discussion. Look at all of the study we carry out on infertility because even minor things going wrong with the system can mean no reproduction. So now you want to evolve countless and radically different reproductive systems one small step at a time? It cannot happen. However, taking a look at the male and female systems and their compatibility, it is not difficult to conclude that they were designed to work with each other. My Bible says in the beginning God created the male and female. For those who think God is always just trying to take our fun away, let us remember that God is the one who designed sex and its pleasure. Sex was for our pleasure and to bring more people into the world because it was not good that the man be alone. But God also warns us of judgment if we misuse and abuse this awesome gift of sex. The problem is sexual sins are not the only sins. We have all sinned and this world has become corrupted because of it. As a result, God is going to make a new heaven and a new earth. 
but he cannot allow even one drop of sin into that new heaven and new earth. That is why Jesus lived a sinless life and died a sinner's death to exchange his perfect life for our sinful life that we may enter into eternal life in the new heaven and new earth. He rose again from the dead to show he was the way, the truth, and the life. But you need to turn from your sins and live your life in exchange for his. Now, if God created such a powerful, beautiful, and pleasurable thing as sex, what else might he have in store in that new heaven and new earth? I can only hope that you too would also turn from your sins, that you too may enter into the new heaven and new earth.